Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis and I'm here again with Reed who's going to help us through some of the questions related to buying some of these standalone solar power units. See, we've all seen them. They're like just a box and it has a bunch of outlets on the front of it. And it's allegedly really, really simple. I have one myself. I have a Goal Zero. I've had it for many years to the point where the batteries are, eh, I don't know, so <laughs> anymore. But, uh, you know, they are simple. You just get them right out of the box and they work. But there are also some some downsides to them and Reed is going to kind of help us through that today. If you didn't see our previous interview, first see our previous interview. Here's a link. You can check it out. Uh, but I'll give you just a little bit of background on Reed. Reed is a really smart guy. He's an IT guy. He's a person that you go to at your company if you work at a company uh, and you're having a problem with your computer. He's the guy that comes in and fixes it like that. Really sharp guy. Knows a lot about solar and he's going to help us through a lot of this stuff today so we can all kind of feel like we're little mini experts. So thank you very much, Reed, for joining us today. Great to be here. So uh, you, you heard what I was talking about in the intro. I've got one of these units. Lots of people have these units. Uh, are, there, are there downsides? That, okay, it's a loaded question. I know there's downsides. To them. <laughs> so share with me some of the downsides of these units because they are really convenient, but there are things that people need to know about them. So terrify us. Terrify you. Well, believe it or not, they can actually kill you. Yes. So what happens is on these portable inverter systems, they have no true ground. And what I mean by true ground is like in your house, there's a usually, unfortunately, most houses is that a giant eight foot copper clad steel pole driven into the ground that is a uh, wire connects to and then goes into your electrical box. And what that is, is it, like it says, ground, it can send energy to the earth and thus not you. <laughs> That's the idea. Now, obviously, we're not driving a giant stake into the ground when we go use a portable inverter system. So what happens is we have something called a floating neutral or unbonded neutral, as the uh, NEC code or the National Electric Code likes to call it. And what that means, though, is these inverter systems is that neutral isn't bonded to ground. If you touch either of those two wires coming out of that plug that are not that third prong that we're all familiar with, they will electrocute you. They can very much electrocute you. Now, there's an, actually an easy fix. There's, don't panic. Say, oh, no, I've got to throw away my Kodiak. I've got to throw my Goal Zero away. You don't have to do that. We have a really nice fix to solve this. It's called the GFCI, so Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. Now, even though there's not a ground, what happens is, is that uh, circuit, it monitors the current going in and out of both wires. And if it sees a difference... In most cases, for the ones like uh, we want to use, it's about, I think it's 100 milliamps or 500 milliamps. It's going to depend on the outlet. It cuts it. It stops that. So the idea is, is if for some reason you touch one of those wires and that current is going through you and not where it's supposed to, that thing will sense it and cut it off. It will prevent you from getting yourself killed. Now, what in the worst case scenario? Say like, you're out there, you're trying to use, you've got to use this thing, it's, there's an emergency going on, it's, an, it's horrible weather, and there's no way you're going to get to Walmart and get a GFCI protection for this thing. What on earth do we do? Well, circuits need two wires to work. You've got to have a way for the current to travel, make the whole circle, as we say. So if, you, if you're needing that, what we can do is you've got to just insulate it, protect the the unit the goal zero or the kodiak from having that secondary return path so put it in like uh we see canadian prepper when he shows his on his videos a lot of times he shows it in the back of his pickup truck that's actually really good because you've got the rubber tires of the truck it's lifted far off the ground and he's got it in a rubber bed liner uh, that really shortens the ability for the electricity to travel you know through him to the ground and back up his pickup truck into the unit which is really good. You could also put it on, you know, like something else that's really insulating is like some wood. Put it on like a wood stand or something. This is very, very helpful uh, to keep that away. So if you don't have a way to get any GFCI, just stopping the ability for the electricity return will help. However, like in all things, you can't guarantee it won't figure out a way to do it. You know, it might, you might be a horrible, horrific hailstorm and rain and everything else and Somehow there's enough water path for it to do it. 
You never know. So the first line of defense, get a GFCI protection. Uh, there's a nice little uh, plug-in adapter I, that I found on Amazon. Uh, I will have Praxis put it in the link in the description for anyone that wants to look at it. And it's a really good option. Um, I've seen at Walmart uh, these power strips that have built-in GFCI protection. They are also a good option. And then, of course, lastly, you know, get it up and prevent the electricity from being able to come through. So off concrete, off of something like that, just get it up away from things and on an insulator, like a wood block or something. All right. Well, that's that's great to know. And I think a lot of us just don't even don't even think about that. I know I'm I'm fairly uh you know, electrically literate. I built my own place. I wired my whole place. I'm very familiar with the idea of a ground. But when I bought the Goal Zero unit, it never dawned on me, hey, there's no wire coming out of this, you know, getting driven into the ground. It just, it was just completely slipped my mind that that would, you know, was not there. So I think it's good to let people know about those sorts of things. So in the next video, Reed is going to walk with us through what he thinks is kind of his ideal system. Uh, in the first video, we talked about like a really you know, basic system that you can kind of, you know, get going with, experiment with a little. In this one, we talked about a system that'll almost kill you unless you take, uh, you know, some precautions. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the way that Reed thinks is the correct way of doing it. His kind of ideal system, not the most expensive system, I hope, uh, but, but uh, you know, just a, a nice basic system where you're not cutting corners and something that's really functional and, and can help you start stepping into that solar lifestyle. So thank you very much, Reed, for being with us today. I appreciate it. I'm sure that we've saved lives and we'll see you next time. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.